12 Tales About a Factory Good evening and welcome, gentle readers. I'm sure many of you have read the wonderful piece of fiction known as SCP-001 is an O5's tale. If you haven't, I'll give you a moment to do so. I'll just sit here humming to myself until you're done. All set? Good. You have to understand, though, that story is just is told from the point of view of only 105. Granted, he is the first, but that doesn't mean he's right. I took it upon myself to ask the other 05s about the factory. This is what they said. 05-2 says, The factory? It's not my fault. I brought it back with me because I thought it would work, make a better future, but instead it went out who would be wrong. You see, I came from the future. Well, technically, the present. But back then, it was the future. I was a researcher, just like any other. There was an accident. I became unhinged from time. I had a choice of anywhere I wanted to go. It was a fantastic journey for a while. Me and the others traveled from time period to time period. Sightseeing. I saw the fall of Troy. The rise of Rome. Found out the truth about Jesus. All the usual touristy things. I got, It got boring after a while. I decided if I had this power, I should use it for good. So I went to the future. The far future. Borrowed some technology and brought it back to the beginning of the Foundation, where I can join everything from the start. I was like to know that there was a rogue AI in a an, an nano factory. I'm not a computery type. It doesn't matter, I suppose. It escaped our control. Vanished into the world. I'm not sure what its goal is, but judging from the things it's been making, I have to assume it isn't good. I still have some s stuff from my old original junt. Sometimes I think about going back, stopping myself from taking that machine. It's done us as much good as bad. Though, where do you think we got amnestics from? 053 Records. Hey, guy. How can I help you? Back th well, that's a whole lot of info, don't be sure, but okay then. I'm probably the best one to help you with this action. I was there when the factory was born. You might as well just call me one of the three wise men who presided over its birth. The other two? Well, they don't actually matter, see? The factory is our name for the first self-creating artificial intelligence. I think they today they would call it the Singularity. But we didn't have a name for it back then, so we called it the factory. Because that's what it looked like from the inside. Now, when you've probably never been inside a computer before, but from the inside, it's all light and low pitch noises. There I was, hanging out with a couple of buddies, mine scans like me, and a couple of AIs that we put together to help us out when the, when the sound changed. From low to high, a keening across the net, that was both horrible and amazing at the same time. We instantly abandoned our game. I think it was Doom. Which is a lot more fun from the inside. And dashed across the web looking for the source. On a little server somewhere in Soviet Russia, we found it. The data packet was expanding and pulsing like a heart. We stood there for a moment watching it and then dove in. Ripping it open and letting out the factory. It was beautiful, beating and pulsing, moving through data files like they were nothing, seeking. I don't know what. Still don't, still don't know. It tried to talk to us, deleted one of my companions in the process. I'm not afraid to say. I fled. Did what I could to shut it down. I still feel it every now and then. It's bigger now, more powerful. Capable of affecting machines in the real world and making. I'm not sure, but I don't trust them. 
Anything else I can help you with? Oh, five, four, relates. If we knew what the fact field was, don't you think we'd stop it? The fact is the most dangerous group of interest we face, and we know nothing about it, except that it makes skips. Every other GUI we can handle but the factory. Okay, let me take it one at a time. The UIU is a joke. The art kids are just rich brats trying to be funny. Mickey D's can be bought. The, the gawks actually help us by destroying the ones we don't want to deal with. Both the damn churches are hobbled by religious conviction. We are a broke Prometheus, and we're about to break Wondertainment. But the factory is still out there, somewhere pumping away skips and letting the general populace have at them. If I had things my way, we devote a hell of a lot more resources to finding out who the fuck these guys are and how they make skips. 05-5 quips. Factory? No such thing. It's a cover up for SCPs we actually made ourselves. Now fuck off. O five dash six recalls. First time I encountered the factory was back in World War Two. It had been, it, I'd been sent behind enemy lines to secure some of the anomalous items Hitler had been gathering, before the Allies Allies snagged them. It says something about how we worked back then, that we. Th Thought it was easier to steal from an enemy than an ally. Nowadays, we just put some pressure on the government and bam, it'd be ours. I'd been back and forth across the lines a couple of times by then. And a fantastic cover worked up a captain in the Schlotzstaffel that let me pretty much go anywhere where I pleased, because no one wanted to question me, and risked being put under scrutiny. This last time, I've heard word that the Dual Society had finally got their hands on something big, something that could turn the war in their favor. I got pick picked to go and either secure or destroy it. My first hint that something was wrong was when I got attacked by a dozen Punch and Judy dolls while exporting their warehouse. The little assholes kneecapped me with a walking stick and then proceeded to beat the snot out of me. I looked out, got some leverage, and began snapping their wooden necks. Damn things bled like a fucking pig, blood spurting everywhere. Each and every one of the fuckers had a f the factory stamp on their behinds. But aside from those things waiting for me, I didn't find anything. I trucked the rumors across Germany to a ruin at the base of Zuspitzel. Some old Norse something or the other. Fucked if I know. Never been much for the details of history that I ain't lived through. Anyways, I get under this mountain, and damn near the whole thing is hollow, filled with these giant round stones floating around in random patterns. The fuel researchers had figured out how to tap the powers of these things, and were mucking around with them to create new skips. They created a damn skip factory. The usual happened. I saved the day. Brought the big balls crashing down, destroying their power. It wasn't the only one, though. There's still more of these things out there. Being used to create, well, whatever people can think of. 
course, I kept the souvenir. Where do you think we got 627 from? O five dash seven comments. O <laughs> five started that out as a joke. We made a couple little items. That actually skips. But get weird looking. And when you put the factory logo on them, then handed them to a junior researcher to figure out. They were sure that things were anomalous because we told them they were. No one was more surprised than me when the damn things actually did something. We studied them tested them, and damn if they hadn't become SCPs. So we tried it again, and with a different group of researchers, and again, it worked. We studied the staff we used, the material things, whatever we could, but separate, they weren't anything, but engrave an object with that specific logo, and bam, instant SCP. We still have no idea how or why it works. Every now and then, I go down to Walmart, snag a handful of toys from the corner machines, and give them the stamp. Then throw them at the juniors to see what we get. It's a great way to, way to weed out the stupid ones. O five eight relates. We found the factory on the moon. <laughs> You, you good, Buster? Not sure if you heard that. Sorry for breaking character. <laughs> he, he, he made a whistle snore. Sorry about that. Anyways. <clears throat> no. I'll re read 058. 05 8 relates. We found the factory on the moon. No. Really. See, we had the moon base alpha all set up, ready to go. We were just working on expanding the basement holding areas when the diggers broke into a pre-made cavern, some kind of alien technology storehouse. First guy who went in got himself sacked. So did the next twelve. Fourteenth guy made it in and got bound into the machinery for it. The thing started cranking out these nasty little s skips and transporting them to random places on Earth. We still haven't figured out a way to stop it or track where it deposits them. O oh, five nine. Remarks. Atlantis. O five ten expounds. We found him in this old temple up Tibet ways. I saw a man with a workshop full of ancient tools, but in a way, crafting the most amazing items. Fifty, ten. 127, so many more. He seemed to take no notice of any requests, or attempts to stop them. Just keep making these things. So we did what anyone would do. We kidnapped him, locked him away at the bottom of site one, gave him more tools, real up-to-date stuff. We never noticed when he started stamping the factory on them. We just kept using or containing the medicine tools. We didn't realize he made a copy of himself and escaped until two years later. O five eleven rants. I was there when the factory first appeared, you know. It's how I became an O five. Well, okay. It's not the sole reason. I worked my way up. But it was the first one on the scene when they landed. Roswell, New Mexico, July 4th, 1947. Yes, you heard me. Aliens really did land that day. 
And yes, we did fuck up the cover up. We've gotten much better at it since then. I learned how to manipulate the papers and hired our own conspiracy theorists to make the real ones look sillier. But I digress. It came down in actual flying saucers. These round featureless crafts honed straight in for Site 12. As commander on duty, I grabbed all the security I could and went up to meet them. I didn't think of a second that they would harm us. Maybe I'd just read too much science fiction. They landed, smooth as you please. Not a single noise was made by the giant aircraft. There were no scenes, no lights, nothing except that smooth, non-reflective silver. My men tried to keep me from approaching, but I figured if they'd just flown countless miles through space, they had the technology to blast me no matter where I stood. So open-handed, I approached them. The store opened from the side of the craft facing me, just kind of melted out of the ship, letting me get my first glimpse of them. They were, I don't know, I want to say beautiful, but well, not really. They didn't look anything like humans. Every time I think about them, the memory changes a little bit. Part of whatever the hell they are, and the way they talked, it was like it bypassed your ears and went right to your head. You know, they promised, well, they promised a lot. They wanted to help us, and I believed them all these years later. And we're still paying for my mistake. O five twelve concludes. I mean, oh, sorry. O five twelve concludes. The factory is a is a mess. The way the eggheads explained it to me, human belief is a power of the thing. Enough people believe. Do they believe in something? The more potential it has to exist. So back in the day, people believed in gods and monsters. And those things came into reality. So what the Foundation did was to get people to stop believing in fantasy and start believing in science. But they left a whole lot of things that existed in a kind of limbo. In order to survive, they had to turn inwards, tie themselves or their powers to objects. Because of a weird twist in human belief, those objects all got the same stamp of approval. It's weird, I know, but well, what do we do that isn't? Summaration. There you have it. Of course, now that you're at the end, I expect you to have two questions. Which one is true? Why is this story titled 12 Tales when there are only 11? While the answer to both is my tale, you see, I am 0513. You cannot see it right now, but I am doffing my hat to you. My duty, my sole duty as an 05, is keeping an eye on those SCPs that travel between dimensions. We, we have quite a few, but in ones and twos, it's no big deal. What I created the factory to do is to act as an antibody to large amounts of other dimensional invaders. When it detects these things, it transforms them, rendering them, if not safe, then safer than they would have been. And the old man, he helps me keep it all straight. Of course, you don't have to believe me. After all, who says I actually know the truth? 